Blizzard Apprentices. Today we're going to continue our look in visual workflow. This is episode two of the series, and today we're going to take a look at building your first flow. Before we go and start building our flow, let's think about what we want our flow to do. So we're going to give our users some questions. So we'll need a place to put those questions and then gather their answers. If they select answer one, we want to take them to a very specific screen. However, if they select answer two, we want to show them a completely different screen. So let's think, what are the pieces that we'll need in order to build this flow? Well, we know right away that we have to have two screens, one for the place that they'll go to if they pick answer one, and a place where they pick answer two. We also know that we need something to decide which of these screens they're going to go to. That is called a decision element. And then, of course, finally, we need a, the location that we're going to start, where we're going to ask our questions and receive our answers. So that's our starting screen element. When we left off in episode one, we had a single demo step. We're going to start building our flow by simply removing the step. You can convert demo steps into screen elements, I just prefer not to do it that way. All right, so let's go start with adding the screen elements that we need. So we're going to start first with the screen element that the user will first see. So we'll call this our welcome element. And screen elements work kind of like you're building a custom object. Once you define the name of the screen element, you can put custom fields onto your screen. It is a very nice click and drag. So we have inputs choices, and then we have outputs. We'll start with the output. So I'm going to just drag that over. You can see now it says display text. When you click on this, it'll take you to the field settings tab. And this is where you're going to have to define that field. So we're going to call this field introduction. And now we have a place to put information. Now we can put lots of different types of things in here. We can include variables that we have defined. Uh, if we click this little text button here we can get rich text so we can do bolds underlines things like that but i'm going to keep this really simple for today and we're going to start off with saying that the user is patrick henry so you're a patrick henry it is 1775 and it, and you're in virginia so what do you choose so this is going to prompt the user to say hey this is who you are, this is the scenario, and you're gonna to have to make some choices here. Let's go back to add a field. And now we're gonna go ahead and choose how we want to have the user provide us some input. We have standard inputs, everything from text to currency and checkboxes, but we wanna provide them with a choice, something they have to make. And we have a couple different options here. We have radio buttons and drop down lists, and then we have multiple select options. I don't like multi-select options in Salesforce or in Flow for many reasons. Um, I do like radio buttons when the values are going to be fairly finite. But for today, we're going to do a drop-down list. So we're going to drag drop-down list over to the right, and now we'll select it. So let's give this. We'll call it your choice. We have a data type value. It's all the, the typical values you expect. And now we have the way that we can populate what's going to show up in this drop-down field. We don't have anything to select right now, so we can create something new. And we have two different types. When you're picking a drop-down or a radio button or even a multi-select list, you need to pick a type of choice. There are two types, choice and dynamic choice. Most of the things you'll do in Flow is going to involve this regular choice option. And that's simply because dynamic choice is going to read records that are in your Salesforce system and there's no guarantee you're going to get the data values you necessarily want. There are times where dynamic choice makes a lot of sense and we'll do an example of that later. So right now we're going to select choice and we're going to enter in our choice. So let's call this liberty 
and I'm going to store the value as simply liberally. Uh, you don't have to have a stored value, but in many places in Flow, it helps to have one. The stored value doesn't have to be the same as the label of your choice, but it does make things a little bit more clear. Uh, examples of where you may use a store value that's be different would be if you were putting, say, a hard-coded ID or maybe a special code, and you're just presenting the user a more friendlier method to select. So we're going to select OK, and we're going to add another choice here. Same set method with select choice. And this time we'll make this death. And we click OK. So there's our very first screen. Pretty nice. Let's go ahead and add our screens that the user will end at. And we'll have this call liberty. And we'll add a field. And we'll just do some display text for here. And we'll just say, congratulations, you have found Liberty. Now, one really nice thing that I like about Flow is if you're creating multiple elements that are very similar, you can use the copy paste function. If you select the element so you get the green highlight, you can click the copy button and simply hit paste. And now we have two screen elements. So all we have to do is make our mo modifications. So this one is gonna be death and I'm gonna change the unique name just to keep it consistent and we'll just change that to be death all right so that gives us our screen elements that we need and now we need a way to route our user to either the liberty screen or the death screen and that is called a decision element so what is a decision element a decision element is basically a fork in the road when your flow arrives to that fork, there's a decision that needs to be made on the path that your flow will go to. The path it takes is called an outcome. You could have many outcomes as part of your flow. You could have very many outcomes. Or you could have a basic decision element, which will always include two outcomes. There must be a defined outcome and a default outcome. So let's go ahead and add our decision element. We're going to make this really simple. We're going to call this liberty or death. In our particular situation, we only have two outcomes. We're going to have liberty or death. So we're going to define one of these outcomes as our liberty outcome. And here we say, when should this go to this outcome? And so we need to pick our input, in this case, it's going to be the choice field that we have on our entry screen. And we'll say it equals to a particular choice. In this situation, it would be liberty. For our default outcome, we don't have to define anything, but we do need to give it a name. So we'll just call this death outcome. And we click OK. Once you have your decision element on the screen, you can click the diamond and drag to one of our outcome screens. It will prompt you to say, well, which outcome do you want to have? So this is going to go if, if they choose liberty, and this is the screen that they'll go to if they choose death. Since there was only a one outcome left, it automatically selected for us. The last thing we have to do for our flow is to start our screen element and link it to decision and let the flow know that this is the screen we want the user to start with. So we're gonna click this nice little green arrow here to say it starts. And that's essentially our flow. Now, before we can test it, we do need to save it. So let's go ahead and save our flow and let's call this liberty or death. And we always give it a description. And now we can test our flow. So let's go ahead and click run. And here we have, we are Patrick Henry at 1775 and we are in Virginia. So what did we choose? We can choose Liberty or death. If we select a Liberty and click the next button, we're taken to the, hey, you found Liberty. If you select the other option, we found death. And that is a very, very simple flow using our screen elements and decision elements. Thanks for watching Wizard Apprentices. 
Remember, the magic is out there. It is yours for the taking. If you've enjoyed this video, please leave a like or a comment. 